All right, we've run through the basics of digital painting. Now I want to show you how you can mess with it, play with it once you have that file saved. First thing I'm going to do is turn off everything except the paint layers. So that's the, the base paint layer. And then on top of that, the refined paint layer. I'm going to unlock both of them so that I can duplicate them. I'm going to select them both using Command and then hit Command J to duplicate them. Then I'm going to say, well, there's a few things. Before I merge them, I'll turn off what's underneath. What you can do is kind of like duotone coloring. You can shift the hue of one versus the other. So first of all, I can take my base color and I can go to adjustments. This is on a duplicate and I can change the color balance. This is to make it kind of subtle. And I'm gonna move its color balance towards something a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna push it towards the blue, towards the cyan, maybe towards the green. So looks like that instead of that, right? Kind of makes them look a little dead. Now I can shift the color balance under image adjustments of the refined paint layer. And I can do the opposite. I can paint it, move it more towards the warms. And without changing the paint at all, just playing with color balance, you might kind of like some of those shifts that happen. So you see now the underpainting has a lot cooler tones to it, kind of purplish and bluish undertones. And that's a very different, it looks almost more freckled. That's a different approach than what I had before, which was like this. So there's always ways you can play with it. Once you're happy with that, like that's a little too yellow, I think, the refined painting. So I'm going to take its color balance. I'm going to shift it a little less yellow. Be a little more cyan. It's a pale dude, that Waldo. All right. Now with it combined, I can also, or I can merge them together. So I can take both of these copies and then hit Command E to merge those layers. You'll find that shortcut under layer when you have multiple layers selected. That allows me to now erase, use my eraser tool. I can customize a brush for it, but I might as well just use a regular brush. I'm gonna do it at 100%, and I'm gonna carve away from the, the silhouette edges I don't like, especially if my brush got a little weird on the outside. And I can do this with a custom brush as well. I just remember I have to use my brush settings. Always good to remember. For every new tool, for every new brush, you wanna check its brush settings when you're digitally painting. Make sure that they're pressure sensitive, make sure they have angle jitter to them if you're going for that kind of hand done brush. And you might want some texture as well. I like a very shallow depth texture on my brush. And now when I erase, it will have a little bit of that. Even though it's just an eraser, it will give that slight soft edge of my brush, allowing for some stray marks every once in a while. So you can clean up your painting that way. Remember they're just pixels. Digital painting is just the most direct way to use the pixels. So this is erasing with the brush, not adding pixels. And this would be definitely what you'd wanna do before you make a print of it. So when it's printed, you don't see edges that you later regret. Good to kind of treat your edges, your surfaces evenly to get that finish. Take little bites away. It all feels considered.
This can all take a lot of time. Okay, some other things you can do besides playing just with the color balance and the shifting of it is we can play with rotoscoping or texture overlaying like we have in past assignments. And to show that, instead of just trying to make the portrait of this guy more interesting, I'm going to change him into a werewolf. That was my idea. So I'm going to leave the bottom edge for the time being. I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to lock all these layers so I don't accidentally mess with them. The ones turned on, the ones turned off. And I looked for public domain, where possible, images on Pixabay and on this art history site called ArtV, where you can download high resolution public domain artworks, things I thought might work. So I'm going to drag and drop some of some of those, or maybe I'll open it in Photoshop first and just bring over what I need. So I just want the faces. So this is some natural history work with these lovely traditional painting strokes. And I like some of the, the ridge work. So I'll show you rotoscoping and compositing, how rotoscoping is different than compositing, but uses the same skills combined with digital painting. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it on top of my layer. Right? It's going to come in at a lower resolution. Then I'm going to composite it in. And I know this is a monkey, not a wolf, but it gives me a different kind of eye socket to start playing with. I'm going to take its opacity down. This is just all experimentation at this point. Going to line up the eyes, going to use these very, very helpful compositing skills that we learned at the beginning of class. Warping, lining up the mouth, lining up the bottom of the nose in particular, and that ridge. Okay, now I can make it 100%. And then, of course, I have my eraser that's already on this custom edge, and I can actually start erasing away from it. And kind of painting out my character. So this is reverse rotoscoping, where we're not painting on top of photography or external reference, but instead erasing it away, revealing it. Now what typical rotoscoping is, is I might just use this underneath what I want to paint, like that, and then I do a new layer on top of it. And I paint this one. So I'm not using the eraser, but using the paint brush. So I'm here. So let's be aggressive first. Let's just give him that kind of interesting shape and then raise up here.
Then it's pretty crazy looking, which is fun. And then when I paint on top of it, I get to steal a lot more kind of crazy colors. But I want to do it on top of it. not on the layer itself, otherwise all of those will be in a crazy light. But I like kind of the furriness that that gives underneath. That's a good start for my werewolf transformation. What else can I do? I can bring in ears from No, maybe not those. Let's see what has good ears. These kind of cat ears are nice. I'm just going to steal these. Maybe steal that nose too. Muzzle. Where compositing comes back. Command C, copy it. Paste it on above. Command T, make it bigger. Stretch it. A Halloween mask. Let's just isolate the things we want, like that ear. Duplicate it on its own. Put it over here. Transform it using warp. like the little fur at the edge. I right. can use magic wand and erase. All that stuff we did early on in the class. Now, the other ear. Duplicate it. I'm copying to the wrong layer, there we go. Transform it. It's going to be mostly hidden anyway. And fold it. All these tricks. Erase away. This is just all experimental. Having fun to take advantage of what is unique about digital painting, different than traditional painting, is that these layers can be tried and then taken away. All right, and then the nose. Looking more like a cat person than a wolf, but maybe the teeth will help with that. 